Here we're going to apply the Bernoulli equation to determine if we have water flowing through a pipe that is bent and vents vertically and the water then coming out the end of that pipe, how high will it shoot above the vent? And we're going to assume no frictional losses, assuming this is running at steady state. So let's draw a diagram of the system that we want to apply the Bernoulli equation. So here's a representation. It's not drawn to scale. And what we're interested in is applying the Bernoulli equation to point one and to point two. And we're going to call this z equals zero. And so here z equals one meter. And here z is one plus h meters. So let's look at the Bernoulli equation where we have at point one a pressure, the density, water, the velocity of point one squared over two, and g times z1. And then we have the same thing at point two. And so what we're interested in determining then is z2. So this is a two here. That's our unknown. Let's first look at simplifying the equation. The way we define z, this is z1. So z1 is zero. Now at the point where the water reaches its maximum height, the velocity is zero. It slows down. It's moving slower until it doesn't go any higher. Therefore, u2 is zero. So this term is gone. And when we look at pressure, Notice this is a gauge pressure, 0.15 bar. So you can say at 0.2 we're at atmospheric pressure and at 0.1 we're at atmospheric pressure plus 0.15 bar. So we can, if we use gauge pressure, then we can say this pressure is zero. Now we know pressure one is 0.15 bar. So what we want to calculate is the velocity and the then of course we have to put things in correct units, we can calculate Z2. So let's look at the velocity U1, and velocity would be the volumetric flow rate, which we're given over the cross-sectional area of the pipe. So the volumetric flow rate, 115 liters per minute, and the cross-sectional area, pi D squared squared over four. So I'll put the four up here so it makes it easier to do the calculation. And now we can substitute in the values. So what I've done here, substitute in the diameter of the pipe, convert it to seconds, convert it to liters to cubic meters, and then convert it to square centimeters here to square meters so that we end up with units of meters per second as we go through and cancel out the units and by arranging this way it's easy to see what's happening in terms of units. So the other value we need now is P1 in the equation so let's put that in units that are going to be the most useful for the calculation. So the pressure in bar converted to pascals 10 to 5th pascals per bar and a pascal in terms of SI units kilograms meters squared second squared so have the pressure have the velocity, I can go back and substitute in to Bernoulli's equation. And so let's let's go ahead and do that. So for the pressure, 1.5, 10 fourth, and let's keep units to make sure things are consistent. Density, this is the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And then the velocity, 3.90 meters per second squared, divided by two, and that's going to be equal to gravitational constant 9.81 meters per second squared times z2. Well, if we look, we'll see that since z2 will be meters, we have meters squared per second squared. We look in canceling units everywhere, we have meters squared per second squared, so we can calculate, add these terms together. So I just did the math, I get Z2, 2.30 meters. Well, Z2 is equal to one plus H, that's 2.30 meters, which means H is 1.30 meters. This is what we're trying to determine, how high the liquid would shoot, so clearly I didn't draw this to scale. Simple application of Bernoulli's equation, steady state process, assuming that it's in viscid flow, viscosity is not important, no resistance in the pipe due to frictional forces, and that water is incompressible.